Hey everyone, today I am recreating these six cards from the Uniquely Creative Card Making Kit. It's called Teenage Spirit and it looks like it's from March. I'm not sure if it's March of this year, but I purchased this on a recommendation from one of my viewers that Uniquely Creative has card making kits. So this is the one I selected. I do donate a lot of cards and a lot of them are specifically for children. So teenage cards are quite difficult to create sometimes. So this is going to create some very, very useful cards that I can add to my donation pile. I thought that I would recreate the six cards on the reference guide and then see how many uh, products I have left or how much paper, how much of the little embellishments, how much of the die cuts and just see how far I can stretch this card kit. Normally I do quite simple cards and then I try and stretch my resources out as much as possible. But these cards here are really scrapbook style almost. So I'm going to create these six and then I'm going to do a separate video where I use up all of the rest of the components and I'll see how many cards I can make with what's left. And a bit of a spoiler, I will show you at the end what's left, but there is loads in this kit, loads more than I was actually expecting. One of the other things I really love about Uniquely Creative is on their paper packs, that front panel, they use half of it to let you know what the card pack is and the other half is items that you can cut out or use on your card designs. So absolutely nothing is wasted. They are very, very clever in the way that they do all of their packaging. Okay, so the first thing I'm doing is using this strip of sentiments and I'm just checking my reference chart the whole way through this process. There are 10 sentiments on this page and only two of them are used. So there are eight spares that can be used for other cards. I use my trimmer, I chop them down and across the top of my desk you can see I've put six cards. This is the way I do the Kendra's card challenge uh, when you cut up paper and put it on different cards, one through normally 15, 16, 17 cards roughly. So I have my six and I'm sorting through everything trying to work out which card goes on which. You can see here that some of these die cuts have a white border but the creators of these uh, reference cards have cut around to get rid of the white border and they've used that so I'm not doing all of the prep work I'm just getting all of the elements and putting them onto the cards and just resting them there I will then come back later and cut things down as needed and get them ready to do them assembly style. There are so many gorgeous things in this die cut pack. I Normally when I look through, there's probably 30 to 40% where I think I have no idea how I could use that on a card or it's more appropriate for scrapbooking rather than card making. But working through this, I was just trying to design new cards in my head and do something that's a bit outside of my comfort zone. I traditionally, uh, like I'm not a scrapbooker. I have never done scrapbooking and using lots and lots of layers on cards is something that I don't normally do unless I'm layering up paper as part of a card sketch. I am looking at this though and I love the way there's so many elements on each card. It doesn't feel to me like the pretty paper is being wasted under the layers. It's really peeking out in really great ways. So um, kudos to whoever designed these cards. They did an absolutely fantastic job. The other thing that made me a little nervous about creating these cards is a lot of the papers have rough edges. So normally when you lay a paper on paper, people often do uh, you know, a layer of plain cardstock or paper underneath just so you've got that separation. But what they've done with these is they've made them, I don't know the best word for it, like they've distressed the paper along the edge. I wasn't really sure how to do it. And then I just grabbed my little cuddle bee scissors and then just opened it up and used the blade and just scraped it along the edge. They look absolutely fantastic. And I am already planning to do some videos where instead of doing card layers, I actually distress some of the edges so that that gives you that separation without having to create a bulkier card. It was a little tricky when I got towards the end of this to find the items that I wanted because some of them were from the die cuts and some of them were from the paper pack. So the paper pack itself has loads of sheets that are little mini die cuts that you can fussy cut out. It's amazing. It means that honestly, if you just got the paper pack, you could create similar cards to this without needing the die cuts. But I do, I do love these die cuts. They're amazing as well. The next thing I need to do is cut up the paper. 
Now, because I'm using the reference guide and it's not a card sketch, I don't know the exact size or dimensions. And these are using Australian standard card sizes, which are slightly narrower and slightly taller than A2. They are based off A4 dimensions rather than off the letter size paper that the US uses. I always make A2, so for the backing panels that are the full width with a small border, I've done those five and a quarter by four inches. And then the rest of these, I'm really just trying to take a look at the card and see what I think those dimensions should be. And then I really do round it off to the nearest quarter of an inch, just so I don't have weird sizes left after I've cut down all the paper for these six cards. The style of these cards really appeals to me. I love the sort of sketchy look. I love that the white border has been cut off some of the die cuts. They've really done a great job of the reference sheet and I will definitely be getting more card kits from a Uniquely Creative in the future. I, th I think also I underestimated the volume of paper that you get in uh, these paper packs as well. With these cutter parts and the way that they've been used, they really do stretch further than you might think. For the grass here, this is just in the middle of one of the pieces of 6 by 6 paper and I will fussy cut that out later, but it is used in such a unique and clever way. This orange paper, I do have some extra pieces of that. I got those just in case I needed some more pattern paper to use up all of the embellishments. I often find that, not embellishments, I often find that I end up with lots of die cuts left at the end and not enough pattern paper. So if you'd like to see exactly what I purchased, you can check out my haul video. It's one of the most recent videos on my channel. I've got about 80 in total, and I really do try and associate all of the different videos with playlists. So there's playlists on how to bulk make cards. There's playlists for Kendra's card challenge. There's another one for the Call Me Crafty Owl sketches. There's quite a few. So if you're interested in checking those out, you can do those by taking a look at my channel profile. When I was trying to find this element, it really made me, I guess, a little bit more aware that some of these pages that are intended to be a full backing panel, perhaps for a 12 by 12 scrapbooking page, you really can cut down the elements and then use those to embellish a card and then use, you know, the grey from the middle that maybe uh, is not as exciting uh, as a highlight behind something. But these little bits around the edges, I often look at scrapbooking pages or paper pads and think, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. But by cutting it down into a smaller element and using it like a die cut to put onto a card, it now really does make me rethink all of these papers that I have in my stash there's quite a few that I have where in the far right corner, for example, there might be a really big floral element that covers maybe a quarter or a third of the paper and then the rest is quite neutral. I'm now thinking that cutting some of those out and using them to decorate a card is a great way to work my way through part of my stash. Are you a scrapbooker? I've never really scrapbooked. I absolutely love photography and I've taken loads and loads and loads of photos but I've never really had the patience to sit down and create one page that's completely unique. Uh, for me, there's something about creating volume. I don't know why. I know all of our minds work differently, but for me, I, I'm really keen to make sure that um, I get a lot of volume out of what I'm doing. So here I can see that I'm adding the orange paper to the back of the die. Well, I guess it's a die. It's not really a die cut. The paper element with the guitar. It was at this point that I realized, hold on a minute. There's not three guitars from the die cut pack. Uh, there's only two. One of them actually came from part of the pattern paper. And then they've added the two extra guitars to the left and right. And so what that tells me is I can create another card using the orange guitar uh, because I do not have to layer them one on top of the other. So again, very, very clever. I am clearly a fan of whoever put these cards together. <laughs> They've done an excellent, excellent job. I'm now cutting out the final elements for the last card. And there's a couple of pattern papers here that are layered up. And then I'm going to off camera, go through and do all of the distressing of the square papers. And then I'm also going to fussy cut out all of the elements that I've got ready to go so that I can then move into showing you how I created the cards. I really do think even a beginner could create these cards. They look really complex, but it's just the layering and the creativity that has really done that. Okay, let's get started with card number one. This is based around AFL football or Australian rules football. So there is a footballer, there is a Sharon football. Uh, and so this is super cool and would really resonate for kids in Australia. 
Uh, similar to any major sport in any country, uh, AFL is big here. So is rugby, depending on the state that you're in, but I am in Victoria. And so AFL is uh, definitely, definitely uh, one of the most popular sports for us here. I love the fact that this has the grass on it. I fussy cut this out. It took a little while, but it adds a really, really interesting element to this card. The, the cup itself and the fact that it's just placed onto the card on the right hand side is something that I wouldn't normally design myself. I think I'm a bit too literal when it comes to cards. And this is really showing me that you can put some really cute elements that are related onto a card and the card itself looks amazing and makes absolute sense. Uh, you can see here with this silhouette of the footy player that he is actually holding a football in his hand. So after my hand gets out of the way, uh, in his hand on the right hand side in the grey is a football uh, and it is the appropriate size for the silhouette. But the card layout has this bigger football uh, put down near his foot and I, I don't know if the intent is for it to look like he's kicking the football, but I don't even care. It makes perfect sense when you look at it. Well, I don't know that it makes perfect sense, but the card itself looks really good and I think the recipient is going to really enjoy it. So that is the main thing with card making. Initially, with all of these layers, I was worried about not stretching out the pattern paper, but I had to just go with the flow of lots of layers and embrace kind of a scrapbooking style of card. I do know this is very, very popular and lots of card designers do this. So I'm going to try and do a little bit more of it myself. So that's card number one. Card number two is again sport themed and this is cricket, really big in Australia, really big in India, the UK, New Zealand, uh, many other areas are big on cricket, maybe not so much in the US. Uh, I would say, I don't know, the equivalent of baseball perhaps. I went to a baseball game in uh, Michigan once and it was really, really interesting to go and see um, cricket. Very beloved in Australia. Lots of kids play cricket. Uh, backyard cricket is a really big thing. Even beach cricket. So we would take a cricket bat and ball on holidays and you would take it to the beach. And it doesn't matter how many people you have. You can have three or four members of a family have a bit of a hit around. Or you can, you know, have loads of friends or holiday friends <laughs> that are down the beach or in the park. And people just join in. It's one of those things where... Any skill level, any experience, uh, it does not matter. Everybody knows how to play and uh, you, can, you can set up your own sort of backyard rules as well. We used to have a thing, this is probably going to sound weird, but um, this is possibly common in Australia, but in the backyard, if you hit the ball over the fence, um, it's called a six and out, which means that you are no longer the batter because you hit over the fence um, and you're immediately out, but you do get points. So <laughs> I don't know if that made sense to anyone, but cricket is definitely uh, something where I have a lot of fond memories from my childhood. Lining up all of the different papers again, adding this to an A2 card base, which is five and a half by four and a quarter. And I always leave the quarter inch border around the edge. That's just my go-to size. And I just think that means the elements on the card stand out. Uh, if I do something that goes all the way to the edge, I never seem to be able to line it up properly and it just looks messy. So by having a border, that looks way better to me. So that's card number two. Card number three is skateboarding. Now, almost not every park, there are loads of parks though in Australia where there is like a skateboarding half pipe or a skating area. Kids use roller skates, rollerblades, skateboards, scooters, a whole bundle of different things. And at most of the parks, you'll find that there's an area for the younger kids to um, do their skating and an area that's a bit more for sort of older kids and adults. But a lot of them just look like, rather than a half pipe, that's probably not the right way to put it. Um, a lot of them just look like a big empty swimming pool with lots of different areas that you can do lots of different tricks and things. So very, very common in parks to have this type of area uh, for kids to muck around and enjoy in the fresh air. This skating one, uh, I think is going to be super popular. I think if I laid these all out on a table 
and said to sort of a, a teenager or, I mean, my nephew's 11, so I could ask him the question, which one would be your favourite? Depending on whether it's sports or music that kids were into, I think that there would be sort of something here for everybody. This is the pattern paper that I talked about earlier. It's cut off the bottom of a six by six page. And honestly, even with layering over it and and putting the skateboard above, it just adds an element of interest without, again, I have to challenge myself about being so literal. Having a kid on a skateboard and then a pile of skateboards below isn't something that I would design, but this looks really cool. I really, really do know that this one's going to be enjoyed. And even this thing with the word adventure, so actually putting some words and some phrases on a card and it not always having to say happy birthday, you'll write inside a card anyway. And this does mean that potentially you could use it for a different purpose, but being so literal with having a sentiment on the front, making sure that the card, you know, is, has the right perspective of all the elements. Most people don't care. They just want something that looks cool. So I've learned a lot from going through this process and I'm going to challenge myself a bit more with my card making. So this is card number three. Now moving on to card number four. This is one of the music ones with the guitars. Uh, This is where the distressed edges really came to life. They look really, really cool. You can see based on the angle here that they have a bit of dimension to them. I did go pretty aggressive with my scissors down the side and really give it a good scrape. And it means that it sort of peels up at the edge a little bit. It does have that really distressed look and I love it. I really, really love it. I just think it's so different to the clean cut look of perfect edges and layering. So the order for this card was a little bit tricky. I had to pay attention to what was layered on top of what. And so I had fussy cut out the two guitars. I added the blue one on the left. There is then a small piece of ribbon. And in order to have it laying flat, I did use, I've got those Tim Holtz mini um, stapler. Sorry, I've got the Tim Holtz mini stapler. And so I used that to staple the ribbon so that it would stay folded and flat. And then I glued it underneath the sentiment. If I did this again, I would put some uh, extra paper or extra cardstock behind the sentiment to lift it up a little bit because there is a little bit of a bump on the right hand side where I've got the ribbon, but it's not particularly noticeable and it does go with the scrapbooking kind of style and theme of the card. So just putting the little AirPods down the right hand side, I am adding the uh, little, uh, these truly are embellishments, these little dots. Um, They were a little bit fiddly. I should have used my craft knife, but I was um, being impatient. So I just used my fingers and struggled. Uh, I then just have one extra guitar to add and that goes on last because it does layer up and over the sentiment a little bit. So again, this is another thing that I've learned is the the power of layering things in the right order so that it has things in the foreground and things in the background. Um, This one is truly one of my favorites. So I'm trying to have a think about who do I know that really loves music that I think would get a kick out of this card. I think this one will go into my stash rather than be donated. Just going to add that now to the white card base and that will complete card number four. How cool is that? Honestly, this next one is an eclectic mix. It's got skateboarding and cricket and music all jumbled in together. I think when I create my cards and I lay out everything and try and figure out what to design, I will probably try and stick to some themes, but in some instances, there's going to be a jumble of things left. And I think as long as they all match together and work well together, then I think it can be successful. This card design to me is an example of that. Uh, I'm layering the music festival ticket and then the uh, skateboarding picture. Uh, They're not in the exact same spot as they are on the sample cards, but it's pretty close. I've I've done everything with the intent of really trying to represent uh, the samples themselves. So I'm layering all of these up. And again, there's three different papers in this one. That faded one in the top right hand corner that has sort of the yellow to gray to green is definitely one of my favorites. I think I've used both pieces to create these six cards. So there may not be much left for me to use for my own layouts, but it is definitely a very, very pretty paper. 
The other thing that's interesting is I don't normally use these embellishment dots and I wouldn't normally use them on these types of cards. But funnily enough, popping a couple of them in the corner actually works really well. I think the fact that they're black helps because it's just a little bit of an accent. They're not a, a different color that's going to crave for attention. So just a few of them in the top or the bottom corner is working well and I'm enjoying using those as well. For the sentiment, the fact that it just says birthday and not happy birthday, again, I would not normally do that. I would feel like I have to have the key message on the front of the card and it would need to say happy birthday. But again, it really does work. So this is another way that I can push my limits of my card design. So that is the completion of card number five. For card number six, the theme is video games, and I've now figured out the one my nephew would pick from the list. He would definitely pick video games. This one is really, really cool. It's just such a simple layout, but the stars in the background look great. A couple of layered pieces of paper, and then it's featuring the gaming controllers, which have been cut out. Uh, actually, these are the die cuts. So there's two die cuts, but there are more on the pattern papers. So if I wanted to create a similar card, I could uh, fussy cut those out as well. If you are enjoying the video, it would be great if you could hit the like button. This is how YouTube shares videos to other viewers and makes recommendations. So it's super helpful for all content creators. So thank you. Uh, all right, this one has ribbon. So again, I folded it in half and then I ducked away, grabbed my little Tim Holtz mini uh, stapler and then put a little staple in the top just so that I could control the ribbon a little bit better. When I was attaching these controllers, I did just try and attach them, but they're the same color as the paper underneath. And so I realized that in the sample cards, they had put some uh, either foam tape behind or some spare cardstock, something just to lift it off. It basically lifts it up off the same colored paper and creates a bit of a shadow. And that shadow is enough to create the separation between the backing paper and the controllers that are being put on top. So it was a very, very simple remedy. I have some spare cardstock that I have doubled up that I use as foam tape. And I've just popped some of that behind here. I could have done maybe another layer as well to create a bigger shadow. But I think what I did actually worked out okay in the end. I'm going to use all of the leftovers from this card kit to create more cards. My intent is to use up every single piece of it and then see how many cards I get. So maybe put in the comments below how many cards you think I'll make from the rest of the kit. Keeping in mind, I am not going to do my usual style of making sure that I get lots of cards out of the pattern paper. I'm going to do lots of layering and I'm gonna put lots of embellishments onto the cards in the style of these ones here. So these will be my inspiration and then I will create a set of cards with all of the leftover pieces. So I really have no idea how many I'm gonna create uh, I don't even want to guess because I don't want to influence your decision, but maybe put a comment below and then we can check it out when I do my next video as to if anyone was close. One of the things that I think will be tricky for me to use is the ribbon. So I think I will chop it into some pieces and uh, put a staple so that I can do something similar to this card design. Then it will probably force me to use it. I don't think there's a ton of the ribbon. Maybe there's a meter of it. Uh, so it won't be too hard to use, but I will have to make sure that I'm using it regularly. Otherwise, I feel like I will get to the end. And that will be one of the things that would be quite difficult to add to a card after the fact. I think the ribbon works best if you are tucking it underneath. I could actually wrap some ribbon around a card maybe, although it probably wouldn't really suit the design of this pack. So we will leave that uh, and see what I come up with. I'm sure I'll be able to figure something out. So that is card number six. And here's all the loads of stuff that I have left. Can't wait to use these up. They are going to be super, super fun. And I have put a link here to a video that I think you might enjoy. Have a great day.